welcome to DC Today on Tuesday, uh, January 24th. Uh, my name is Brian Seitel, and it's great to be with, with you all as I kind of go through today's market and, and give you a, a couple of uh, takeaways. Um, but we opened, let's see, last night we had a positive day, a nice positive day on Monday in markets, and futures sort of opened flat. I'd say we were up and down 20 points for I don't know, several hours until early morning, something like that. And then markets sort of sold off, most likely because of with with Europe. But um, we opened or we pointed to a down 150 open. We opened down 170. So, you know, right off the bat was down and we actually traded lower. We were down something like 250 points within the first 20 minutes of trading. And uh, although that was sort of the low and we kind of regained a little bit from there, we had um, some uh, 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 PMI data that came out around 11.45 or so um, that helped markets recover. And we sort of recovered from there and then kind of traded sideways for most of the day, closing just slightly positive on the Dow and then a little bit negative on the S&P and NASDAQ with, with more technology, um, heavy weighted indexes in there. So kind of a quiet day in markets, uh, but some good data that we get to go through here. And I'll walk through it with you a little bit. So, so the, the PMI data that came out today, you know, we, we've been talking about inflation forever. And so that's sort of been the narrative. It's, it's when is inflation going to roll over? And we definitely have seen that at this point. Inflation, and I'll, I'll even call it, I, I believe it, that we've seen peak inflation here in this cycle. Um, and inflation has been rolling over. And so now we're getting data points, for example, like a services number or a manufacturing number that we got today, both showing uh, contractionary uh, readings. We got, um, I think PMI on manufacturing was, both were slightly better than expected um, following December, which was quite negative. So anything below 50 is contracting. Uh, manufacturing was 46.2, sorry, 46.8 versus 46.6 from the prior month. And then services, 46.6 from 44.7. So, yeah, right around that time, you saw markets recover. And the reason is that, you know, those numbers um, could have been worse. And so you could have show, you, you could have shown markets really kind of accelerating to the downside, declining more uh, and actually speaking more to recession. And you didn't really get that. You got a little bit of recovery, but still showing contractionary. But sort of the porridge was just right, which is that it's negative, um, and, but not too negative and a little bit better than last month. And then it kind of speaks to the Fed being able to pause or kind of stop or slow at least their rate hikes, uh, if you believe in that narrative, which, which we do here in the remainder of the year. Um, so that was good news. Markets tend to recover a little bit from there. And then we just sort of closed, like I said, a little bit mixed on the day. Um, we are right in the middle of earnings season. 67% um, of companies have reported better than expected uh, this season so far. Which is which is good. It's it's lower than what we've seen in the last couple of earnings uh, seasons, which is more like seventy and eighty percent, high seventies, low eighties percent. You know, being better than expected. So um, so we'll take that for what it is um, uh, all, uh, as we kind of get through this season. Um, what else do I have for you here today? We can look at um, a couple of other things. Um, just from a sector breakdown, I guess, if you look at that earnings kind of report card a little bit, you look at where earnings are likely to come from in 2023, about 12.4% of the earnings in the S&P 500 are going to come from just the energy sector. The energy sector obviously was kind of left for dead in 2020 and has been recovering ever since. Um, only re represents about 5.2% in market cap. So you have 12% of the earnings coming from 5% of the index. It's a pretty robust sector. Um, and to put that in comparison, technology is going to represent something like 21%, 21.4% of the index's earnings for 2023, but still represents over 26% of its market cap. And so when you think about where tech has come over 2022 and into 23, which is down, uh, and valuations have come down, um, I don't know that that story is necessary over just because you're still at a market cap north of where earnings are going to come in. And I don't know that earnings are going to recover that much, if at all, in, in 2022. So more to come there. If you sort of look at other sectors and you're going to go uh, across all of them and you look at, um, uh, you know, percentage of earnings that represent in the S&P 500 versus percentage of its market cap weighting, they're all basically in line. Um, you know, healthcare, industrials, utility, staples, real estate, financials, you know, you'll get something like, you know, five and five or 10 and 10, something like that. They're pretty lockstep, except for energy, which is a 7.2% differential to the upside, meaning that there is 
either likelihood for earnings to come down, which is unlikely given where oil prices are in the economy and demand and China reopening, um, or you'll get mar multiple expansion, uh, one of the two. And I, I think it's a combination more of, of on the multiple expansion in energy just because they're trading so cheap still. They're not expensive. Whereas technology is kind of the opposite, where you kind of have a 4.8 differential between the earnings that are going to come out through the S&P and the actual weighting. And I think it's going to go the other way, which is you'll have multiple contraction continued in this in this year of 2023. Um, discretionary to consumer discretionary is also off where I think you'll get some multiple contraction. Um, and that's what we saw in 2022. That's what we saw last year. So I think it's it's kind of a lot also along the the theme of, of our theme, one of those themes for 23, which is, you know, that continued rotation from from growth to value, those things all line up pretty well. Um, there is, uh, there was, I guess, top news for the day, um, other than PMI data, which is top news for me, but maybe not for everyone else. Um, uh, there was an antitrust lawsuit filed from the Department of Justice against Alphabet, which is the parent of Google. And, um, you know, looking at the the potential monopoly that they have on digital ads. And I sort of broke down where they are. So they've got a 24% market share, sorry, 26% market share in digital ad space. So, and by the way, this isn't the first justice suit against Google. So, that, so you know, we'll, we'll see how this shakes out. I, I, the stock was down a little bit today. I don't know if I'd read too much into that as far as the industry goes or even the company, but, um, but definitely notable for the day. And you saw communication services down on the day. I guess that was the the, uh, the biggest detractor for sector performance in the market. Um, bonds, you know, high yield spreads right now at about four and a quarter, something like that. And what I would say is, if we are looking at, at contracting PMI data, which is which is contracting, um, the bond market is not signaling recession. It doesn't mean that we won't have one. In fact, I think we will have one. Uh, which is a, going out on a limb to say at some point we will, but we're we're skating on some thin ice here with some numbers. You know, we have interest rates that have moved really far, really fast. We have economic data that has is in contraction territory, and we have inflation that is is we don't have inflation. We have deflation. Inflation is moving lower, meaning it's deflating. Um, so th so the spread of a four and a quarter on a high yield bond doesn't speak to an imminent recession, and I'm sort of watching those spreads pretty closely. You do have coincidentally a little bit of CDS uh, widening in the sovereign uh, debt market for the U.S. with this debt ceiling debate, which I think is a little bit funny. Um, I really don't know if much, much if anything will come of it, but uh, uh, there's only a few times when you've seen those CDSs move out, and the other two times were really 2011 and 2013 um, when we were doing the same thing on the debt ceiling, which of course they'll end up raising. Um, some interesting to note, I, I was looking at just transfer payments today. So meaning money that's moving from government hands into the private sector. Um, and if you think about things that are indexed for inflation over the last year, you have Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, you know, 8.7% increase on that uh, going, going to people. You also have um, a Fed balance sheet that is very large that they're winding down with quantitative tightening and they're in the process of moving about 95 billion or so a month out of the balance sheet, actually selling bonds in the market. But the actual balance sheet itself, about half of it, so call it four or five trillion, four and a half trillion, something like that, half of it matures in less than three years. And the average yield on that half is about 1.8%, meaning that the holders of the that debt are getting paid about 1.8% to hold it. And that's gonna roll over and most likely reset at something around four, could be three and a half, something like that but close to four if we did it today. And so my point is just with things that are indexed to inflation, that's more money, especially social security technically, you know, going, going into those receiving it. And then also you have just the holders of this debt um, gonna receive more as that stuff matures and roll over. So there's a, a lot to be said about deficit, deficits in this country as we move forward. Um, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier, but the, the narrative as I see it now is really moving from inflation. We were waiting for so long to see any sort of rollover in those numbers. And, and now we're seeing them dramatically across the board. So we check that box. You know, the Fed's mandate is price stability and full employment. Well, price stability is not stable because it's deflating, but it's going towards their 2% mandate. Um, and that's, that steps in the right direction. So that's good as far as Fed policy. Um, the employment picture, however, is still not something that we're seeing much of a change in. 
So I just sort of view it as before I felt like we were in a waiting game to see when inflation would finally roll over and hopefully the economy wouldn't break before that happened and that we got that covered. Now it's on the, on the employment side. We do need to see the labor market kind of unfreeze here a little bit. It's, it's far too tight and it's too tight for what the Fed wants to see. And we are playing a waiting game to see that, that number sort of correct before the Fed could really um, stop raising rates or, or ultimately go the other way. And hopefully they kind of achieve this soft landing, which is what, what they think they'll accomplish, of course. Um, the markets are a little less convinced of that. And part of those forward-looking numbers on, on, uh, on manufacturing services is indicative of that. Uh, but all in all, a uh, uh, fine day. Obviously, we're off to a positive start in 2023. Um, and like we said before, you know, a lot of what has moved up the sharpest is what moved lower the most last year, which is, go figure, almost always the case. There was uh, some interesting data out of housing today. Um, if you look at, you know, where NAHB numbers are, uh, which, are which are really rolling over harshly in, in historical terms in housing, meaning that higher rates is definitely causing housing to slow. And you look at total employment in the construction sector being at all-time highs, it either speaks to one of those things changing, and I don't think it's the housing data. I think that's going to continue to be weak. And so unfortunately, those in that sector, in the construction sector, I'm not sure if the, the, the all-time highs of employment are, are really going to stick around. I guess the silver lining is that you could see um, you know, some overall employment picture get a little bit better. Part of the, part of the reason is that the housing uh, uh, employment is going to come off a little bit here and help the overall number. But all in all, you know, a, a report card for the day, a solid C plus, B minus. Not a bad day, not a good day, slightly up. Uh, a lot of data that we digested, so I'll take that. Um, tomorrow, we have David back with you on DC Today, which is Wednesday. Um, no economic data that I saw or noticed for tomorrow, so pretty much crickets, uh, silence for tomorrow in economics. But, um, but then we get a ton of it on Thursday and Friday. I know there's goods orders, there's some, some inflation data, some PCE data. Uh, and so forth, some jobless numbers in there too. So there should be more to chew on as the week goes on. Uh, but with that, I appreciate you listening as always. Uh, for any of those who are still in the playoffs and in, in football, I wish you the best of luck. I certainly am not. So I'm a little bit indifferent here on how we go, but uh, we'll be watching nonetheless. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Reach out with questions. Thank you.